Hi, if you're a woman over the age of 40 and you're approaching the next phase of your life, which is that big M word, <laughs> menopause, <laughs> this Facebook Live is definitely for you. So I'm Marissa from Rise High and this is Megan from Mimi Moon Meno. And today we are doing a whole session purely dedicated to females over the age of 40, 45 and, and beyond because we want to make sure that they can not only financially survive, yeah. but also thrive during menopause and beyond. Yeah. Absolutely. And there are some interesting challenges that women face during those period, that period of their life. There is. So today what we're going to do is explore some of those challenges, explore why some of these things happen, mm -hmm. and really explore what women can do to protect themselves from these challenges, set themselves up, and make sure that they can not only survive, but thrive. menopause, but thrive. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So thank you so much for joining us. We are taking questions live today as well. So if you do have a question, please join in the comments section below. Um, we also will have the opportunity to take some anonymous questions after the segment if you'd like to do that as well. We also have a wonderful, wonderful freebie giveaway, don't we? Yes, Megan. Yes, it's a two-pager of how to survive menopause, um, and it's based on my motto of um, movement, mindset, and modify, the three things that have helped me with my journey, um, and also to help you all understand what the symptoms look like, because there's something like 40 symptoms that you may be experiencing during this time, and if you don't know what they are, you can end up potentially like me, being misdiagnosed and going down the path that you could avoid if you know what those things are. So that's a wonderful little freebie that you can access, um, which we will have available for you following this Facebook Live once we load it up as a blog on the Rise High Financial Solutions website and load it up onto the YouTube page, uh, Rise High TV. But let's get into the topic, let's get into the guts of it, because it is a big topic and you know, at Rise High, uh, we're really passionate about supporting women, yes. as I know you are, Megan, and particularly financial literacy education and helping women to thrive financially is one of our passion areas. Yes. Um, so combining your passion area of helping women through menopause yes. and our passion area of helping women so, you know, with their financial literacy and, and thriving financially, it's a really good combo. So yes. thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate it. It's wonderful to meet another female that's just so passionate about making a difference. Yes. And really helping others to live the life of their dreams. That's right. And yeah. that's what it's all about ultimately, isn't it? It is, absolutely. Yeah, it's really about women understanding yeah. the changes that they're about to go through and being prepared for that. Rather than yeah. sort of hitting a brick wall and going, oh my God, it's happening to me. It's really about knowing that this is going to come and what are the things that I can put in place now to make sure that I continue through. I call it vibrating positively yeah. um, through the next phase of their life. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I was really excited to run this topic with you today is because the stats are actually showing that women aged over 45 years yes, is the fastest rate of homelessness in Australia. Yeah, so Generation X women, and this is really the driving force behind mm. what I'm doing. Um, so my profession for the last 20 something years has been in social housing and during that time I became aware of Generation X, my generation, your generation, yes. um, becoming the fastest growing homeless cohort. Yeah. And what I realised was that um, there's a common denominating factor and that's mm. menopause and mm. no one's talking about it. Um, but some of the things that lead to homelessness and that relate to finances and also menopause is that relationships break down something around the, yeah. the area of 70%. And so if you're a midwife... So 70% of relationships break down during menopause. During menopause. As a result of menopause? Partly as a result of menopause. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, you could probably break it down and get really deeply into it. But yeah. it's just that 70% of relationship breakdowns happen at this time. Wow, that's a big number, isn't it? It really is a big number. Um, and so from a financial perspective, mm. if that's where you find yourself and you weren't expecting that to happen, well, all of a sudden you're going, well, what, what money have I got? What assets <laughs> yeah. have I got? What does that look like for me? And that is a contributing factor, a key contributing factor to women's homelessness. 
Yeah. Um, the other one uh, is family and domestic violence. So mm. that increases by 30% during this time of our life. Wow. Um, and again, a lot of women that have experienced that really find, experience um, also financial difficulties. So absolutely, really key factor in um, thinking through those things for your menopause. Um, a couple of other things that uh, come to front of mind for women and homelessness at this time and menopause is that we take we tend to take extended periods of time out of the workforce mm -hmm. between the ages of 45 and 64. So if you get to this stage of your life and you've already taken time out to raise yeah. a family and then all of a sudden you find yourself unwell and needing to take some time out of the workforce, <coughs> again your finances come into yeah. acute perspective. What have I got? Can I afford this? Yes. Um, and lastly there's the super payback. Big, big contributing factor to women's homelessness. Um, and again, if you've taken time out of the work yeah. to get to this stage, that's something that you start to think about. And I think, you know, I agree with all of those factors, and I think the, you know, being left newly single, mm. I'll say, mm. at, at that age, mm. can have such a big impact on all areas of your life. So yes. financially, if you haven't been someone who's taken active participation yes. in managing your family's finances and understanding your family's finances mm. at the point of a separation, yeah. you know, or potentially even death of a partner. Yeah. You know, there's different reasons why relationships can break down. <coughs> it can put you in a really difficult position. Yes. Um, or if you've allowed your partner to manage everything without you actually understanding it. Yeah. That can also be a little bit dangerous, can't it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think, and that's one of the reasons why I reached out to you, was um, hearing you speak at International Women's Day. Yeah. Um, and learning that so many women don't understand their finances, don't know what's coming in and out of their bank account. I, I just think, oh, God, that's terrifying. It's really sad. Mm. And it's if that's terrifying. our generation, what's the next generation doing if we're not yeah. able to educate ourselves? How does that impact the women that are coming after us? So well, the saddest part about that, maybe, is that <laughs> it's actually the statistics are even worse for our generation. Mm. With the new statistics coming through, it's showing that more and more females are lacking confidence yeah. in understanding money yeah, and understanding how to use money and understanding the importance of super and preparing for their future. You know, these are big, important topics they that are. we can't just put our head in the sand. No. You know, women, men are not your financial plan. No, no. <laughs> you, need, you need to really grab it with two hands, Yeah. understand it, and if it is something that you find challenging, yeah, 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 yeah. find someone that you can work with and uh, sort of explain it in a way that you understand. Yeah. 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 Someone that you yeah. trust as an expert outside of your partner, yes. outside of your family or friends, yeah. yeah. just so that you can have that independent, you know, expertise and understanding of yeah. where your money is going, what structures you and your partner might yep. have in place, yeah. you know, what is happening for your future. Yeah. And as much as we don't like to think about relationships breaking down, yeah. We need to really? think about what we might do if that was to happen. Mm -hmm. So that we're not sort of left stranded or left in the lurch and we sort of know that we have a plan. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And I think the other thing, um, something that I've uh, heard you speak about before is, and something that contributes to the relationships failing, is finances and not yeah. being able to speak what, with your partner about finances. Absolutely. So, how would you like? With women tuning in now, yeah. if they're in a situation where they just don't know what's going on, how would they approach that with their partner, whoever they're in the financial relationship with? Yeah, it's it's such a great question, Megan. I'm so glad that you brought that up because money's a really difficult topic in relationships. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's actually something that people get quite scared to talk about. I and mean, I think there's actually some funny adverts on TV at the moment that show that people would rather do almost anything, yeah. you know, than talk about money yeah. with their partner or with their family and friends, which we have to sort of start to change that culture yeah. um, because money shouldn't be a secret topic, especially in a 
romantic relationship. You should yeah. be able to talk to your partner about money matters. Yeah. Um, best practice is to have a regular money date, yeah. or what I like to call a money date, where you organise to meet at a regular time. Maybe you can go out and get some takeaway, or you know, in a wet time when you don't have kids around and you've no no distractions, where you can actually just sit down and have a discussion. And in a money date, it's really important to talk about uh, you know where you're at now. Mm -hmm what your goals and dreams are for the future because when you're in a partnership you want to make sure to some extent that those goals and dreams are aligned yeah. or that you at least have an understanding of what each person wants out yes. of the finances and these are times when you can talk about some fun things like how can we plan for a holiday yeah. how can we plan for our retirement and our future but it's also a time to have some tougher discussions of you know what are the things that we need to make some compromises on or how can we work better together mm. to, you know, move closer to our dreams and goals? Now, that's not always easy for every couple. Yeah. You know, in some relationships, one, to, you know, what we often see in our work is that in every relationship, there normally is someone who takes a dominant mm -hmm. role in making the money decisions. Yeah and someone that takes a more passive role. Yeah. And that's okay, as long as the person that takes a passive role is actively involved yeah. and doesn't feel excluded by the person taking the dominant role. That's really the key here. Yeah. In situations where a female is looking to get some answers from her partner and wants to have more discussion, but her partner's not open to that, mm -hmm. That is, in a way, a form of domestic violence. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's a way that that person is exerting control, control. over yeah. the female to exclude them from <coughs> understanding the financial position and exclude them from uh, being a person that could be self-sufficient. Correct. Yeah. You know, and that's a, bit, that's a bit alarming. So if you're in that situation, then definitely I would seek advice and support. Yeah. Um, especially if you you know, are signing up to loan agreements or having debt in your name where you don't really understand what you're taking out the debt for. Yeah. Especially if you're signing any documentation, you know, make sure that you have, if you don't feel comfortable doing it with your partner, speak one-on-one -on -one with your mortgage broker or with yeah. your accountant just to ask them the questions. Yeah, and make sure you understand what you're signing. Make sure you understand what you're signing. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you're not being pressured into signing something. If you are, Find a way to let someone know. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you don't have to face this alone. That's exactly right. And that's yeah. the, the same with menopause. It's really about getting women speaking openly and discussing things openly. Yeah. And sharing stories, sharing experiences. So whatever those experiences are, coming together and sharing and reaching out, and it's exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah, and it's they're both really taboo topics, aren't they? Money and menopause. <laughs> no one likes speaking about either of them. <laughs> but they're reality. They are reality. You know, all women that have to eventually go through menopause, or so if they're fortunate enough to live through that. Well, yeah, that's what I was just going to say. We, we're all going there. We're yeah. all going to experience it. The, the good and the bad thing about menopause is that um, not everyone will have a negative experience. I want to say that first because it can be a scary thing. Mm. And I think. Well, I don't think I know. There's some people that you bring up menopause with and they're like, no, I don't want to talk about it. No, 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 don't want to hear about it. It's negative. There's a lot of positive things that come out of menopause as well. But there are, for 80% of us, we will really have symptoms that are mild to extreme. Mm -hmm. That does impact every part of your life. And so it's really about talking about it mm. and saying, well, have you experienced, a, for example, a night sweat? You know, someone might experience that. Someone may be having a hot flush in your office and you don't know how to, you know, but they don't know what to do, yeah. they're feeling embarrassed. And it could just be as simple as saying, hey, can I, you know, get you a cold glass of water? Um, yeah. Simple things like that, rather than feeling shame and, and embarrassment, just saying, hey, it's a natural thing that's going on. How can I help you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, can we talk a little bit more about menopause? Yes. And... I guess how women can identify that they're going into this phase. Yes. And some of the things that they can do to help themselves thrive. Yes. <laughs> during this phase of their life. So that they don't have the 
significant life and financial impacts that can sometimes happen yeah. when there's so much change within them. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so what are some of the things that you've mentioned a few early symptoms mm. already, Yeah. but what are some of the things that can alert people to the fact that, okay, maybe they're entering this phase of their life. Yeah. These are the sorts of things they should be looking to do to thrive during this period of time. Yeah. Um, can you give us some, some guidance around those? Yeah, sure. So first of all, I'll just clarify what menopause is because yes. menopause is covering off on three stages of this transition. So the first first stage of the transition is perimenopause, yeah. and that's when you're going to start to notice the most symptoms. That's where eighty percent of the disruption will occur. For and what time. age group is that normally? It varies. So for me, mine started around. I say 38, but actually now that I've got education and 2020 hindsight, my menopause started around 36. Okay, so it can start in your 30s. Correct. And um, but for most women, your menopause will start around 45. Mm -hmm. um, your peri, I should clarify, perimenopause around 45, and menopause um, happens generally around 51. So okay, perimenopause is the start of everything. Your estrogen is the Mm -hmm. It's the transition between being reproductive to post-reproductive. Mm. Menopause is 12 months plus one day with no period. And then following that, it's post-menopause. So that's what menopause is collectively. Peri, menopause, menopause and post-menopause. Yes. Um, and women spend the majority of their life in menopause. <laughs> so it's, it's really important. So we have to, to get comfortable with, within that phase. You have to get comfortable um, and you have to really look after yourself. So yeah. um, my, my mantra is movement, mindset, modify. And the reason I came up with that was because of my own experience. So I, I didn't understand what was happening to me. I thought I could do the things that I used to do, and you just you can't. You've got to adjust. You've got to try to change because your estrogen levels are defined. So yeah. there's just you know different things that go on for you. Um, so sorry. Before I go into that, I was just going to say of the symptoms, there's about 45, and I, I realise that your <laughs> viewers won't see this, but it's on the hand. Yeah, wow, look at these. these so they're great, aren't they? Yeah. So. I've put this into a spiral because your symptoms can vary quickly. Is this on your website? Um, it's on the handout. It's on the there handout. Is, there so is a the list free, of symptoms on the, the free, website. Yeah. The free beaver that how viewers can download. Correct. Yeah. So the reason I've put it in a spiral is because if you don't understand what's going on, which is mm. what happened to me, I felt like I was going in a spiral of never yes. ending symptoms that no one was explaining to me. Um, however, once you understand that you know, your night sweats and lack of sleep is one of the first things to happen. Your anxiety may increase, that's yeah. another thing that happens. Um, the self-doubt, that's a really big thing for a lot of women, and depression. Yeah. And if you've never experienced those things before, it can be very confronting. Um, body pain, frozen yeah. shoulders, <laughs> there's a lot of things, a lot of symptoms that occur that you can easily put down to you know, I, I did a run on the weekend and that's why I'm hurting. Or I had an extra glass of wine with dinner and that's why I'm not sleeping. Or, you know, someone might say yeah. something that upset you and that's why you're feeling anxious. Um, so it's those things that you want to be able to go, right, what is actually happening to me? Is this a regular occurrence? Um, and can I collectively bring these things together and say, yeah, I think I might be experiencing perimenopause. It's, it's a bit, it's a bit of the same as how you should manage your finances. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the first step is just to have an awareness yes. of where you are and what challenges you're facing. Exactly. <laughs> and what, you know, what your goals are. Yeah. And then to be able to sit down and put a plan in place. Yes. You mentioned a couple of symptoms there, which I think are so significant in terms of finances. Mm -hmm. You mentioned self-doubt and anxiety. Yes. <laughs> and we've definitely seen that you know, with women in that in that period of their life where they are struggling with a bit more self doubt, yeah. anxiety, lack of confidence, yes, that really flows through in a massive way to their finances, yeah, or to every decision. In your every life. decision, um, but finances in particular seem quite so big and scary, yeah, that women can just put their hands in there and say, "I don't know anymore," and just leave it to someone else, yeah. And we've even seen situations where women that are really capable, mm -hmm. that have been really actively involved in managing their finances and making big finance decisions, 
get to a point where they have you know, dropped their confidence and their self-belief so much during that period that at that point in time, they just throw their hands in there and they just don't want to know about it anymore. Yeah. And that's a really sad thing because that's the time that almost they need to really think about really think about it the most. Correct. Because many women will end up being on their own at some point in time in the future. Yes. Whether it's because of death of, of a partner or um, you know, like you said, a relationship breakdown. Yep. You need to expect that there will be a time in the future where you will have to do things on your own. Yeah, where you're going to need to be responsible for what income you've got and how you're spending it. I think the other thing that catches a lot of women by surprise with menopause and money mm -hmm. is all the unexpected costs. So yes, medical. medical costs, specialist costs, testing costs, they're, they're sort of the obvious ones. Yes. But for example, you don't expect that you're going to have to change all of your bed linen. So I just simply cannot sleep in anything but flax linen. And oh, I don't know if you sleep on flax linen. <laughs> but that bed linen is very expensive. <laughs> so you've got to weigh up, am I sleeping yeah. or am I you know, spending money on some linen and some technical clothing yes. that's allowing my body to breathe so that I can get a good night's sleep. Um, and you may, depending on your symptoms, you may not necessarily be able to work to the same extent that you were working previously. That's exactly right. Which can also have an impact on your financial well-being. If you're not sleeping, you're not able to work properly, you're not able to concentrate. Yeah. This, this, Again, it's that spiral. <laughs> and that just makes it, you know, that's a really good point to sort of show how important it is to have a safety net of, correct, you know, emergency fund savings and to almost financially prepare for this stage of your life. Financially prepare for a reduction of your work hours, a reduction of your productivity, an increase to your medical and wellbeing expenses, yeah. and actually just be ready for this. Well, how do women get ready for that, though, Marissa? Yes, I guess. And that's a concern that I hear a lot from women, is they hit this time in their life and then all of a sudden they realise they don't have enough super, they don't have savings yeah. for a rainy day, so they've got these costs and other expenses they don't have to Yes. So how do women, how do women plan for this? Like, what, what would be your recommendation? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess the first thing that's probably fairly obvious is the sooner you start planning for it, the better. Correct. Yeah. So even if, you know, this, even if you're watching this video, um, I think as women, it's our duty to prepare the next generation of women for the future as well. So as much as it is about starting as soon as you can for yourself, it's also how do we educate our daughters and our nieces and you know, the younger women in our lives to actually start preparing for this sooner rather than later. Yeah. And it's what I like to call pay yourself first. Yeah. So many Australians, it's not just women, it's also men, we have a tendency of spending everything we make. You know, we get money in, we spend it, we spend it. Yeah. Um, and we save whatever's left over. The thing is, there's not always money left over or enough left over, and we're not really forward thinking. We have a bit of a she'll be right attitude in Australia, which is not serving people well in terms of setting themselves up for their financial future. So instead of the she'll be right attitude, it's really about as soon as you can, sitting down with your mortgage broker, sitting down with a financial planner or an accountant, someone professional, and talking to them about where your current situation is yeah. and getting a real awareness so sure, yeah. of where your current sure. situation is. Yeah. Sitting down with them to work out how you can build up an emergency fund yeah. of up to six months of living expenses. Yeah. Many women don't actually even know what their monthly living expenses are. Yeah. But sitting down with someone, an expert, like we can sit down with someone for free mm -hmm. and actually go through what their living expenses have been for the last six months. Yeah. So they can first have an awareness yes, of what they're looking, where their money's actually going. And then we can plan moving forward where their money should be going in the future yeah. um, so that they can actually start putting a plan in place where they're paying themselves first yeah. to build up that emergency savings bumper of six months worth of living expenses. Yeah. So they've got that as a protection. Yes. Right? Once we've set that up, the next thing is how do we build some wealth for them in the future that can bridge the gap of that their super, you know, the lack of super yeah. is going to feel like. We want them to make sure that when they stop working, when they retire, they are going to have a passive income that can support 
a comfortable lifestyle, and that's what it is. It's a comfortable life. Yeah, yeah. It's not about being rich and you know driving no. fancy cars. It's, it's about a comfortable, comfortable life. life. You know, people think that investing and planning for the future is just for the rich. Yeah, but actually, everyone needs to do it. Yes. Because yeah. the pension is never really enough. No. People need to take responsibility of their own financial future. And the, like I said, the sooner you start, the better. But then again, it's never too late. Yeah. So I don't want people that are a little bit older watching this to feel like they've missed the boat because you haven't. The sooner, the better. Yes. But, you know, never too late. But also don't procrastinate. Yeah. You know, get off with it. Yeah. Like I said, there's a lot of free support out there for women. Yes. Um, at Rise High, we provide a fee-free service yeah. where we can sit down with someone, have a look at their living expenses, talk about their, where they are now, what their goals are, help put a plan in place. There's lots of great organisations that can provide that free support. We just have to be brave enough to seek it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the same with my airport, so that's part of the service that I provide. I'm actually a project manager by trade. So yeah. um, I find that the most important thing in that course is really sitting down and going, right, have, where am I at right now? Yes. Where do I want to be? Exactly. And how am I going to get there? And really putting in little steps yes, around right. movement ones that modify, yes. putting those actions in place, and the modifying part could be around what am I doing with my finances? Yeah. Or it could be as simple as, am I going to stop drinking alcohol for a little while, for example. Yeah, but you know, you cover the whole thing so that you do have a comfortable and a healthy life. Um, and again, I always, I call it having positive vibrations because it's really easy to get into a negative space during this transition. But if you're the one that's taking the first step and you're the one that's making your action, or putting the actions into place out of your plan, then you can feel confident that you're doing something and you know what's going on and things will be with you. And as scary as it is to take that first step yeah. of reaching out to get help for menopause or get help with your finances, because um, you may be lacking that confidence in the initial aid. Yes. But like you said, actually having that plan and making positive steps in the right direction gives you really good fucking guidance. Yes. Endorphins. <laughs> it actually helps you to gradually build your confidence, doesn't it? Do you see that in the women that I you see see that a lot. And I see yeah. that the more that you start talking about whatever it is, whether it's your finances or menopause, other things that are happening in your life, the more you're able to share the story and raise your voice, the more women come to you and say, hey, I heard you talking about your menopause symptoms of not sleeping. I'm not sleeping. How, you know, what did you do? And really sharing those experiences. It, it does, it builds your confidence. All of a sudden, you become someone that people want to ask questions to. Yeah. Instead of being that person that's like, oh, God, I'm not sleeping. It's about people knowing that I'm not sleeping. You become a person that said, hey, I'm not sleeping, and this is what I'm doing. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. and like I said, it should be a different topic because almost every woman is going to go through this to some extent. Well, but, but it's not almost, it is every woman. Every woman. But it's going to go through it to a different, different extent. It's a different majority. Different degrees. Yeah. Um, I mean, the one of the things that I love is the name of your business. Yes. <laughs> so explain that to me. So Mini Moon Menno. I just, yeah. I love the M and M. Yeah. Mm. So, Mini Moon Menno. Mimi is my is actually the name that my family call me. No, okay. no one in my family calls me Megan. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so I've been Mimi my whole life. Yeah. Moon because well, your your life is a cycle. My periods are a cycle. Menopause is a cycle. But actually, my maiden name is Luna. So okay. I've lived by the moon my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and meno because of menopause, and you know, Megan played with menopause didn't have the same room as Mimi Moon meno. Um, and then I, my mantra of being movement mindset modified, it just all sort of flowed from there. Mm. So that's why mm. I'm Mimi Moon meno. Yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful. I think it's so great that you, you know, provide such a wonderful service to women to help them thrive through this period of their life because. It should be an exciting period of time yeah. in our life. You know, it's normally the time in a, in a woman's life when, you know, if she has been a mum, she can start to get some time back for herself. And like you mentioned earlier in the session, to actually take care of yourself. To take care of yourself. But the other thing I wanted to say as well is that part of the stigma around menopause has been aging. Mm. And previously for our mothers, you know, they didn't want to talk about it because it was like, oh wow, you're in menopause, you know, it was in their big thing. 
But what people don't realise is that the survival of our species actually relies on the postmenopause cause of women. Mm. Um, so it's our knowledge, our knowledge, sharing of knowledge, helping to bring the next generation forward that actually helps our species to survive. And the only other non-domesticated mammal that that happens with is with orca whales okay. um, and wow. pilot whales from Japan. There you go. And so when you look at those um, those uh, species, particularly the, the orcas, they are run by women. Their whole, oh, sorry, their whole pod, <laughs> their whole pod is matriarchal lineage, as opposed to us, where we are patriarchal. So we need to change the focus. It yes. is, like I said, because of us, because of um, our knowledge, we created the species yes. um, through pregnancy. And you know, I'm not, I'm not disregarding men, but I just want to focus on that. Yeah. It is a really important time. You've learned a lot. You know a lot. You've got to here, and the fact that you are here is actually a privilege. So really embrace it. Really enjoy it. Um, and like you say, take that time for yourself. Take that time to focus on what you need. Um, and by looking after yourself, you can look after others and pass on that knowledge to the next generation. Yeah, I really love that, Megan. I think that's a really great place to end this. I feel like we could talk about this topic yeah. all day. <laughs> um, but I think it's been a really good topic, and I hope that what, what our viewers today get out of this is to really start to take an active awareness of where you are in your life both from a health perspective and a finance perspective and understand that the two are related Yes. Um, and generally, you know, if you're doing well in one, you're doing well in the other, you need to sort of be doing well in both to be able to thrive through this period of time. Make sure that you take care of yourself yeah. and make sure that you realise that you're not alone. Exactly. You know, yeah. that's a really big important takeaway I hope that people are going to take from this is that there is help available. Yeah. There is the support that you need. You're not alone. Yeah. Don't do this alone. Um, and like I said, we're going to have the blog post up soon on the Rise High website. <coughs> we're also going to have the video of this on our YouTube page, Rise High TV. So you'll be able to rewatch the video or share it. We'd love you to share it with other women that you know that may be going through a similar period of time or period in their life, maybe sort of experiencing some of the symptoms. Uh, because we'd love them to, to have that as well. Yeah. And there will be a great free giveaway yeah. that you'll be able to access from the blog post. And that has all of the symptoms, the symptoms. and as well as lots of survival tips. So lots of value there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Megan. Thank, Thank you for being part of the session today. You were wonderful, wonderful um, wealth of knowledge. And we'll see you all again next time. Thank you and Thanks bye. Time.